Hello, 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 brothers and sisters out there. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Got a hot topic to talk about tonight. So come on in, come on in. I want you all to get relaxed. Come on in, come on in. I see you, my little sister. I see you, John Hair Talk down there. How you doing? How you doing, everybody? Come on in. I see you, mother. Come on in, come on in. Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. I hope that you all had a very, very good day. I apologize for being late. It was some things that came up on where I live at, so I apologize for being late. But guess what? I still came to be with my brother, and I came to be with my sisters. How you all doing? How you all doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. We got a good show tonight, and it's not going to be long. I'm going to jump on it. It's not going to be long, my brother and sister, but sisters... You could probably get something out of what I'm about to say. How you doing, sister or female novel? How you doing? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. This is a good topic, my brother. My sister, how you doing, sister Deborah Scott? I see you and Phoebe are doing head down there. Come on in. Come on in. We're about to get rolling. We're about to get rolling. All right. All right. All right. How you doing, sister Jane? And I hope that you all enjoyed the music of my boy. Genesis, he always kicking us off. How you doing? How you doing, Sister Flo? Those of you that are here, go ahead and grab your bag of popcorn. You see it down there at the front. Get your bag of popcorn. Get your uh, soda. Courtesy of uh, Sister Flo Harvey Martin, she always provide us with the refreshment when we're about to get into a good, good show. How you all doing out there? Your brother Tony, he is rolling. If I was in bed, rock, I'd say I'm feeling yabba dabba do like the Flintstone. Yes, I am. I am doing good, my brother. I'm doing good, my sisters. I hope that you all are doing well. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? This first part of the week. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? My brother and sister, if this is your first time uh, listening and seeing me, my name is Tony M. Tooman. I talk about relationships. I talk about relationships pertaining to that of a man and a woman from a position and perspective from the Bible. When I say the Bible, I talk about God's word. God created the man Adam first. He had a unique relationship with Adam. Then secondly, he got one of the Adam's ribs. He stepped to the side, had a unique relationship with the woman Eve. He represented the woman back to the man, and the man said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should, should call a woman because she came from man. If you don't believe in that, you got what is called a free will. You can do whatever you choose to do, but I come from the perspective of a man and a woman. That's what I strongly believe in from God's word. Now, like I said, if you don't believe in it, you got a free will. You can do it, whatever you want to do. But since you're here, go ahead and get your bag of popcorn and soda and come on up to the front with the rest of us so we can get into this topic for tonight. The topic for tonight is over two years of dating and living with a man without being married. She should ask these questions. And you know I said things in threes. I got two more times to say this. Over two years, over two years of dating and living with, you know, with a man without being married. She should ask these questions. And again, I'm driving this home. That's why I repeat something three times. Over two years of dating. She could be staying at her place. He could be staying at his place. But it's over two years. And then living with a man, it could be at his place or her place, but it's over two years without being married. You, sister, some of you, not all of you, you might need to ask yourself this question. Why? That's the question. Why? Why am I still in this condition? What is it about me? We're going to address the, uh, the elephant in the room again tonight. I'm not going to skirt around it. I gotta put it out in front of you, sister. I hope that I'm not I hope that I'm not talking to some of you all that have been wasting your time. Some of you have been wasting your time. You can't get it back. You have been dealing with a man that have been stringing you along. How you doing, sister uh Cheryl? And you've been you've been with this guy and he's been stringing you along, along, along. And you might not even have talked about it. He have not talked about it. He won't even give your relationship a name. But you're doing some things. Now, what question should a woman ask herself 
then the man that she calls herself in a relationship with that doesn't see herself as being a wife at this present time while I speak. I know, I know some of you say, I know Tony didn't just say that, but I thought I heard it. Who do he think he is saying stuff like that? I hope that I have not stepped on any of your toes. I take that statement back. I do mean to step on some of your toes. I do mean to step on some of your toes because I want to get your attention. Most of you sisters, not all of you, most of you sisters that are possibly playing or you performing the role of a wife, I'm talking about some good sisters. You might not realize it, but you're playing or you performing the role of a wife without actually being one. You allowing some guy to buy the cow when he could get the milk free. Now, how do you feel about this topic that I'm about to get into? I hope that I'm not talking directly to any of you sisters, but some of you, you probably have walked down this road before or you presently in it. And you're in it, my sister, because you have attached yourself to the wrong man. Some of you sisters don't realize this. There is a ram in the bush. Don't Some of you have put yourself in a position, unbeknown to yourself, you have put this man on a pedestal. That's why some, some sisters, it's hard for you to break away because you put the man on a pedestal and the only person that's supposed to be on a pedestal is Jesus Christ himself. Now, the reason, and I'm not talking bad about men, God, men are supposed to be the head and leader in the relationship. And as I have told you, sisters, many, many times, and I'm not going to stop saying it, we know, I'm including myself, we know, we know in a short period of time whether you are wife material or not. We know it. I know some guys don't want me to tell you stuff like that. I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here because I love you, my brother and sister, and I like to tell you the truth. I'm not here to beat down on no brothers tonight, and I don't beat down no sisters. As you know, depending on the content, I talk about I talk to male and female, but I might lean more to one gender than the other. But I hold men and women responsible for the relationship. I do. But when it really comes to a man and woman being in a serious, committed, and and a uh, covenant relationship. Brothers, the Lord look at you more than he look at the woman. Yes, she got some responsibility, but you supposed to be the head and you supposed to be the leader of the home, brothers. Now, again, I'm about to address the elephant in the room, this big old invisible elephant. Everyone see this elephant, but no one don't want to say, that's an elephant over there. How you doing, Sister Karen? That's a, how you doing, Sister Sheriff Ferguson? How you doing, Sister Quiet? That's an elephant in there, but nobody ain't saying nothing about it. But guess what? Your brother Tony is about to talk more about it. Now, some of you sisters, it's sad, it's sad, it's so sad that some of you have been, you are in a current relationship. Now, picture this, some sisters, or you know a sister, or you have probably been a sister, or you're currently in a situation like this. Just picture this. You in Atlanta, Georgia, dirty south. You in Atlanta, Georgia, you are driving north or south of 75. You are on I-285, or you might be cruising down I-20 in the big city of the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia, or other similar big cities, and even some smaller town. It filtered down to even smaller town. But we're going to say, just for the sake of this, you in Atlanta, Georgia, on one of those busy uh, expressways. Very busy. And some of you know how it gets up there sometimes. You know it. You are currently stuck in traffic. You're currently st stuck in traffic. And some of you all know about this. You're currently stuck in traffic because you made the wrong turn at the wrong time, and you got on 75 north or south, I-285, or you got on I-20 at the wrong time, and when you make that wrong turn, so you can't get off, so you stuck. And not only are you stuck like Chuck, but your AC went out right at, and it's hot. It's 100 degrees out there, 
and your AC went out on you. It stopped working point blank. And now you know why it went out because you ignored the warning sign from watching on that dashboard. It was flashing, but you didn't pay attention to it. It was flashing, 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 but you did not check it out. Now you have noticed why the air conditioner is out. You will come into almost a standstill. And it's hot out there. It's 100 degrees out there. Now you're rolling down the wheel. You frustrated and you wonder why did I get on here at this time? I have seen this before. I have seen how the traffic get at certain times. So why am I here right now? And to top it off, you look at the, at your dashboard again and you see where the gas is behind the red little warning. Meaning that you are running out of gas and the car is running on fuel. Now you're getting stressed out, right? You're getting so stressed out because you don't know. You know it's the exit, but it's up there, and you've been in this same spot for 30 minutes, and the car just moved inch by inch, and you wondering in your mind, has somebody had a wreck? Have a car broke down? What happening? And some of you all notice when you be sometime on these expressway 75, uh, I-285, or I-20, that's a lot of time nothing don't be wrong. It just depends on the right, the wrong time, and you there. But the bad thing about it, you ran out of gas, and but you the car still going. The car is still going, but you running off of fumes. So not only did you ignore the flashing sign of the AC, and you frustrated, now you in a stressed position because your car is running on fumes. And you don't want to get broke down out there on, on the highway because you you it's just a bad day for you. It's just a bad, bad day. Now, the red sign is out there and you're riding. And you, as you all know, a car can go a little bit with fumes. It can, but it don't have the gas. And that's where some of you sisters are at as I speak right now. You in the middle of traffic that is not going nowhere. Now, here are some of your traffic problems, sister. Some of you, sister, you, ign you are ignored some things. You have ignored some things. And you disregarded the red flag. I'm going to take you over four points, my sisters, basically. I'm going to take you over four points. Number one, that was a caution light. There was a caution light at the beginning when you start talking to this guy, but you ignored it. The caution light, the amber light, it was doing like that, but you ignored the caution light because you, he was talking so good. He was smelling good, that cologne. He was looking so good, and he was doing all that talk. He had a good mouthpiece. So that light, but you see, it's something, it's something about this guy. It's too good to be true, but it's something about that guy. But I, you, you, And it was out there in your face. It was in your face. Boom, boom. You even probably took around your family and friends. And they said something about it, but you and you ignored it because you started getting so emotional with this guy. Then why you then you ignored the caution light, didn't you? Didn't you? Some of you. You ignored the caution light. So then you came up to a part where you you did you did a little detour. You ignored the GPS. You had that GPS in you. And like some people, they ignore the GPS because they start, sister, some of you go by your feelings. You had the GPS that know the better way and you wanted to go somewhere else and the GPS tried to reroute you away from this guy. But you ignored it. It kept, and you all know how it be with the GPS. When you turn wrong, it tried to re put you back on. But now you want to ignore it because you know it's short away. You got yourself in a predicament. After that, you ran into a stop sign. When you seen the stop sign, you seen it red. Not only did you ignore the caution light, not only did you uh, ignore the detour and you uh, disregard the GPS, you ran through the stop sign. And when you ran through the stop sign car, you thought you knew what was going on. Then you ran into what is called a dead end. You can't go no further. That's what some of you sisters are at right now while I'm talking. You in a dead-end relationship with a guy. 
One thing about it, sister, there are basically two type of guys. There is the spiritual driven guy and there are the worldly guys. One is the truth. One is the counterfeit. And it's hard to detect what is real. A spiritual driven man, that's not saying that he's uh, perfect. He is imperfect and he falls and make errors sometimes. But this man is straightforward with you. He's a good man. He's a good man because he's led by the Lord. But he didn't have all the things that you thought that he should have. You understand? He didn't have all the things that you thought that he should have. But you were ignoring everything. Then you had this counterfeit. He looked so much like the real thing. He would, he looked so much like the real thing. He was drinking some Coke. He had Coke with a smile. And you know, all know the logo about Coke, right? The real thing. But it's not the, he's not the real thing. He was a counterfeit. And you missed it. You seen something and you feel so. Let me tell you something, sisters. A lot of times it's called, you all call it a uh, female intuition. Let me stop that right now. Don't stop going by your intuition. Where did it get you? Where did your intuition get you? You don't need no intuition when it comes to life and especially a man. What you need, not what you want. What you need is to be led by the spirit of God in your life. That's the first mistake a lot of you sisters make. Not all of you. A lot of you make a mistake because you do not depend on the Lord. You think that you can do it by yourself. A lot of times men get in jams because they don't look to the spirit. They don't look for the spirit of the Lord. I have been down that road before. I have did I have made some wrong choices when it came to woman until I met Cinderella. She's imperfect. I'm imperfect, but she's the right one as I see it right now. Out of all the women that I have dealt with, she is the top one so far in my life. And then some of you saying, why are you saying so far? Is this something you're trying to tell her? No, I'm just telling you about my experience as far as being in a relationship. I'm not talking about dating. I'm talking about in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship. Some of you sisters, are you sitting at the king's table? Ask yourself this. Are you sitting at the king's table? You see, at the king's table, let me tell you who sits at the king's table. The round table. Who know, Who's going to be sitting at the king's table? Some people that are important. One person that's going to be sitting at the table is the queen. The queen is... God to be sitting at the table. Are the concubines going to be sitting at the table? No. What are concubines? I'm going to tell you the definition. First of all, a queen. A queen is the wife or widow of a king. That's what a queen is. She is the wife or widow of a king. What is a concubine? We can say a concubine is a side chick, someone that you get with every now and then, but for the sake of royalty, a concubine is a woman who lives with a man, but has lower status than his wife or wives, or to say it differently, she's a mystery. So, sister, are you a concubine? You are either, sister, as we speak, if you're involved with a man, you're not his girlfriend, and you're going to pay us two years, and I'm being generous, you're going to pay us two years, so you are either his wife or you're a concubine. I know majority of a, a lot of women. What are you waiting for? Now, there are some exceptions to the rule. Truly, there are some exceptions to the rule. But why are you in a relationship with a man that then went past two years? Me, myself, I say that a man know. And a lot of guys, we talk about stuff like that, sisters. I'm telling you, some of us, we talk about that. We talk, and then it be some little, <laughs> she don't know what's going on. And a lot of these guys, sister, they be gaslighting you. And I'm not stepping on a guy, but they're gaslighting you. Because you see, you understand about it. Men are, they use their analytics. When men get into relationship, let me tell you when men get into relationship. You 
sister, you're not no romantic decision when it comes to a man. When a man makes a decision, it ain't got nothing to do with romance. It's got something to do with business. A lot of men is not going to tell you that. You see, you're thinking that it's romance, right? Uh-uh. It's business when men make a decision by a woman. When it comes to a woman, a man, not only is he going to see you as a wife or queen or a concubine. And I'm telling you this. I know some of you saying ain't no concubine, but let me tell you the definition again. If you have gone past two years and you're still playing the boyfriend, girlfriend, and this man will not marry you, but you playing the role of a woman, a wife. Let me tell you about what a king does. Who the king takes to the ball? No, let's, let's back it up. Who sit on the throne next to the king? Does the concubine sit on the throne? No. Nope. Does the concubine go to the ball with the king? Nope. Do the people of the, uh, wherever the king rules at, who do the people recognize? Do they recognize the king? I mean, the queen or the concubine? They represent, they are recognized the queen. All hail to the queen. That's who they notice, the queen. The queen gets the benefits. What, and you see, the thing about concubines, that you got to understand this, sister, you are putting yourself at a lower status. If you're not top notch, if you're not good enough to be for a wife, you have did what it's called, you have settled. You have let this guy beat you down and you have settled for your position. And this is what happened to a lot of you, sister. I have heard it doing, I have, I have seen it with my own eyes. I listen to ladies when they talk during a consultation. I mean, I see it. A man string you out for a long period of time. He will string you out, string you out, string you out. He bamboozle you. He gaslight you. And he and he he just do some things. Now, you got some slick guys out there. They'll treat you real good. They'll treat you real, what appears to be real good. They counterfeit. But it's not the real thing. Even though he drank coke, it's not the real thing. He He's a counterfeit. He's pretending. But you know what? You give him all the duty. You're doing all the things like a wife would do. And he see it, but you just ain't good enough. You just ain't good enough. And some of you sisters, you let these guys string you along for 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years. They date you that you either live in their place or he live in your place. And when the conversation come up, it always get pushed. It get pushed into the future or he don't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to talk about it. So add, like Sister Flo, you have to ask yourself the question, am I'm a queen to him? Now some sisters say, I'm a queen without a king. But according to the dictionary, since if you all want to look at the dictionary, the dictionary say a queen is the wife or widow of a king. That's what the dictionary say. The dictionary also say a concubine who lives with a man. That's the shackers. The shackers. Or people are the, the we're going to see where this go. We're going to see where this go. This man got you at a lower status. And you don't recognize. This guy got you at the lowest status. You are another word for a mistress. You are a side chick. You are a side woman. Some women, they they like being called the side chick. There's some women out there that don't mind being the side chick. They glory in it. But you see the thing about it, a lot of time, they're gonna somebody gonna catch some feelings. Who more than likely gonna catch the feelings? Yes, sometimes men catch feelings, but who more than likely going to catch the feeling? The woman. It's a business decision to us sisters. The romance come afterwards. That stuff, like I always tell you all, sister, when you look at the Disney, the, the Disney romantic stuff, when you read those romantic novels, when you look at these things on TV and the movies and all that kind of stuff, that's all, all of that is make-believe. It's not real. That's not the real life. They sell that stuff to you. 
When you look at dinner stuff, it's for a short period of time, maybe within an hour to two hours. When you read a novel, whenever you get to it, it just keeps you gripped in. When you look at these things on TV, these are uh, these little things. They they even showing the crimp. Well, they didn't stop showing the crimp stuff on the Hallmark Channel or whatever it's on. They stopped doing it. You know, they stopped doing all these things. Uh, with the Christmas part, that's what I call a friend of mine. She was looking at the Christmas stuff, right? And it's the same thing over and over again. You got a different actor and actress, or you got different characters. It's the same formula. Woman, woman, and the man meet. They go through some hurdles. They go through some some things, and they, in the end, they get together, and they normally be a happy ending. That's the formula for romance. Men, they know that you like romance. They know that a lot of you sisters, you believe in the make believe. Some of you sisters, you're looking for that knight in shining armor. He doesn't exist. The knight in shining armor doesn't exist. So don't think you Rapunzel and you're about to let down your hair. Don't think that you sleeping beauty and he's going to come and kiss you on the cheek and wake you up. Don't think all that kind of stuff. And then you're going to be on a silhouette on a hill and it just, you just see you and him and you're kissing in the moonlight up there. And you're in a silhouette. You got to stop believing that crap. And you see, that's why guys, they take advantage of you, sister, because they know that you like that kind of stuff. So what they do, they sell you romance. Because we know, we know, sister, when it comes to manipulation, because guys manipulate a lot. Women manipulate, guys manipulate. You understand? Why? And that goes all the way back to this, what I'm saying. That right, uh, Cheryl, they live in the family. And it goes all the way back to this. These slick guys... They got their coaching from Satan himself. They learn. They learn Satan uh, stra uh, strategy. If you like, I always say Satan knew he couldn't go directly to Adam. He knew he couldn't go directly to Adam. So who do he manipulate? Uh, he went to the woman. He knew, and Eve was perfect. So sister, you're not perfect. So these guys, Satan's sons, they manipulate you. Most of the counterfeit uh, sister, they want to use you. You ignore the guys that they might not be the bad boys and stuff like that, but you ignore them. You've been ignoring these guys for years. These guys, they made it plain and simple for you, but you want the bad boy. And you see, a lot of these guys, let me tell you what a lot of, you, a lot of your sisters do. You run after the men that don't want to do nothing for you. This man don't want to invest time in you. He's not going to help you no kind of way. He don't, he, he contact you only when he wants something from you. He got you in a position where you running after him and you feel like a fool. You feeling like a fool. You tell him, and so a lot of you sisters, not with just one sister, I have seen it before and you telling other people about how bad this guy treating you. You telling other people. You turn around you think you got, you tell your family about this guy. You tell your friends about this guy. You tell your co-workers about this guy. You tell social media about this guy. And they all listen to what you got to say, but there comes a point where they they don't want to listen to you no more. Because when they see you coming or you they see your call, they say, eventually she's going to start talking about him again. I'm tired of this. And then let me tell you all, sister, your family, sister, your family members, your friends, your co-workers, social media, they, they talk about you behind your back. They talk about you behind your back. And one of the most stupid things some women do, I'm not calling women stupid. I said some of the most stupid things women do when they put their business out there on social media. And then they asking the public, what should I do? The public is not your counselor. You acting for the, all you doing is entertaining people. You, you tell, you tell people about a situation, then you'll use this little cap and you'll say, I'm just asking for someone. Have you brothers and sisters ever noticed this? When a person asks a question a lot, they say, I'm just asking for someone. Then they asking for themselves. Don't ever, don't ever believe that. When they say, well, I'm just asking for someone, they're asking for themselves. Because a lot of times, 
these people, men and women, when they ask you that, they don't want you to be able to identify, but you got to read between the lines. Back to this sister, what position are you in? It's been over two years. Yeah, he gave you a, yeah, he gave you a, a, an engagement ring. He promised you some things. Some of you women, you've been wearing an engagement ring for how long? How long have you been wearing an engagement ring? Some of you don't even have an engagement ring, but he's been stringing you along. And you, a lot of you sisters, you are good women. You're good women, and guess what's happening? Time is ticking. The hourglass has turned over so many times. The sand is running out. And let me tell you what's going to happen. A lot of you sisters that allow this man to string you along, let me tell you what more than likely is going to happen. First of all, you're not the one. Majority of the time, you're not the one. He's not going to tell you you're not the one. Verbally, a lot of times. Sometimes, verbally, they do tell you you're not one because they, how they talk to you, they don't respect you. And then you watch their actions. Some of you sisters, you get knowledge that this man is talking to another woman or women. And he continues to do it. You know why? Because once, once he step over that line, he's going to see how you're going to react to it. You see, you got to nip it in the board right then, but a lot of you sisters don't do it. A lot of you sisters don't do it. That's why a lot of these guys, they continue to do things to you. They continue to do things because they know they could do it. Because they know, that in their mind, they're saying you're not going to go nowhere. These narcissists, they say you're not going to go nowhere because the world uh, functions around me. Some of you sisters, you got yourself together, and this man is sponging off of you. This man has been spawning off of you for years and years and years. You let him stay in your house. You give him money. You let him use your cars. You give him your credit cards. You pay for trips for him and the other woman. You're doing a whole bunch of stuff, and it's right in your face. You're seeing all the caution lights. You run into the detours. You running through the stop sign and you at a dead end. When you gonna wake up, sisters? Stop believing all that crap, that fantasy thing. The fantasy stuff is about making money. The Disney romantic stories, those novels that you read, they cost. They cost. And not only that, that stuff that you look on TV, all this stuff is fantasy and what? For entertainment. That's all it is. For entertainment. So to the I know exactly what you've been saying. Though it's no more. I I hear you. Yeah. And Sister Flo said, Preach Brother Tony, help somebody. I hope that I am helping somebody. Because, Sister, let me tell you this. I'm not talking bad about the brother. When I say brother, as you know, when I say brother, I'm not only talking about black guy. It's crossed the racial line. When I talk about sisters, I'm not only talking about black sisters. I talk about other sisters of other races. You understand that? So that's what I'm telling you because I got brothers and sisters uh, that's a different ethnic group. You know what I mean? If they believe in Christ. You understand? If they believe in Christ. Those my true brothers and those my true sisters. And when I'm here, right here, my brothers and sisters, this is not no beat down on brother, but you see, the thing about the brothers is this. The brothers, they supposed to be the head and leader of the relationship, not the dictators and the manipulators of the relationship. These guys, some of these guys, they have master, they the master manipulators. And you seen it, but you didn't want to see it. Because you got you got so attached. Some of these guys. They would even leave. They would leave you. They would drop you so quick when they get what they think is the right woman. But it's not over with for them. Let me tell you what happened on the back end for some of these guys. Some of you good sisters. Let me tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen. There's a principle called sowing and reaping. You don't, you don't uh, attack the man. Don't attack the man. Cause he has what is called a free will. You got to understand that, sister. And let me tell you this, sister. Listen to what I'm saying. 
There are two ways. There's another two ways to look at it. You either gonna do it God's way or you're gonna do it your way. God's way is for you to go through a period of engagement and marriage. Or you go ahead and get married. That's God's way. The world way is to say, I'm going to see what's going to happen. We got to test this relationship. We're going to test it for a while because we don't know one another. Let me tell you something, brother and sister. When you get married, before you get, even if you get married, you don't know the person. You will never know your mate 100%. You're not Jesus. So some of you, you'll be saying, I got to get to know him longer. What, what all you got to get to know? What all you got to get to know? You ain't got to, all you need to know is if the Lord is in the situation. And I went and a few day, a few shows ago, I told you sisters some question that you need to ask this guy point blank when you first day these guys. You got to do it. And I'm going to tell you, the first thing you sister need to know is does this man have a relationship with Jesus? Because that is a pivotal question. Does do you have a relationship with Jesus? If he got a relationship with Jesus, guess what? His actions and his words gonna show you. It's gonna show you. It's clearly gonna show you whether he'll kind of fit or he's the real. And I have told you this before, I believe, sister. What I was told, an FBI agent, not all of them, but how do they how, how are they able to detect what a, a real twenty dollar bill is? Let me tell you how they do it. They train, they study. So when they see a counterfeit, they can pick it up just like this. The average man or woman don't know what a real twenty dollar bill look like. You assume that you got a twenty dollar bill. Why do you think when you go to the store they have these little markers and they put it and they uh swipe it across there? That let them know whether it's a legitimate uh, counterfeit or the real thing. Jesus is just like that marker. Jesus will go down just like that on that man. So you can know whether that man is counterfeit or not. Jesus, my sister, he flashed, he used to flash like he's not in parliament. He never was a member of parliament, but he got a, he got a big flashlight. Jesus will hold a flashlight, especially the man is in a dog man. When I say dog, I'm not talking about the color of his skin. I'm talking about the content of his character. God, through his son, Jesus, is going to shine the spotlight on this man. You're going to be able to see those dog spots. When the light shine on the dog spot, like if you go in a house, and I have told you all this before, if the house is dog, and you put your key in the door, if you, when you put your key in the door, and the house is dark. If you, when you flip on the light, if you see any roaches, mice, or anything, they move in the dark. A lot of times they move in the dark. Once that light goes, what they do? They scatter. That's how some of these guys are. When the light come on, they scatter. That's why you have to have a relationship, my sister, with the Lord. If you don't have no relationship with the Lord, guess what? You think that you got a relationship with the Lord. You know about the Lord, but you made an error. You made an error when you put this no good man on a pedestal. You knew that that man didn't have no relationship with the Lord. You knew. He said he believed in the Lord and stuff, but his action is contrary to the real thing. Because if this man were in the Lord, he would bear some fruits. He would bear some good fruits. Where does the fruit come from? Everything is in the root. You understand, sister? Everything is in the root. The truth is in the root. And I have told you all this before. Three things. Three things, sister. I said this. I said in uh, the Old Testament, I think it's Isaiah. I th yeah, I think it's Isaiah. He made a statement. He was influenced by the Spirit to make this statement. He said this. He said that an Ethiopian cannot change the color of his skin, neither can a leopard change his spot. When Jesus was on earth, Jesus made a statement. Jesus said that you could tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. 
If you plant an apple seed, you're going to get an apple tree. You're not going to get no peaches from an apple seed. It's going to bear the fruit. You are familiar with Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou say, uh, when a person show you who he or she is, believe it. Three sources. Three good sources. But you don't want to believe the three sources. They are tried and true. Those three sources that come from wisdom and experience. It's there. There's nothing new under the sun, uh, sister. Everything a lot of these guys do to you, sister, the only thing they got that's new is technology. They got the Texas and all that kind of stuff. Other than human behavior, it's, pat it's always pattern and behavior, sisters and brothers. It's always pattern and behavior. You have to pin, you got to uh, observe this man. You got to be like, you got to put this man in a lab. When you put this man in a lab, it's just like, it, picture this. You in the lab with your white coat on, right? And your little reading glasses. And you have a pad. You put the man, just like, for example, just an example, I'm not saying that he's a mice. Put him in the, put him in the maze and put the cheese at the end. And watch how he go try to get the cheese. Study his behavior. That was this science called Pablo, right? Pablo did this. We talking about pattern and behavior. He tested some dogs. He would feed the dogs and ring a bell. He would ring the bell before he feed the dogs. So this, he he was conditioning the dogs. Okay, he would condition the dogs, right? So every time he run the bell, the dogs they start slobbering because they knew a meal was gonna be there. So what he did. He took the meal out of it. He took the meal away. So what did he do? He rung the bell and the, the dog started slobbing. You know why? Because it was called pattern and behavior. What was Pablo doing? He was conditioning these dogs to do what he want them to do. Thank you, Sister Sherry, Jeremiah. Okay, I made an error. Yeah, Jeremiah 13, 23. Thank you, Sherry, for correcting me. Jeremiah 13, 23. That's where it got an uh, Ethiopian cannot change the color of his skin, neither can um a leopard change the spot. Thank you, Sister Sheriff. But like I was saying, my, my brother and sister, you got to understand when it comes to pattern and behavior. Sister, I know you are emotional. I know you're emotional. You can't lead with your emotion. When it, when I talk about emotions. You cannot lead with your feeling. Don't go by your feeling. Even the Lord's, even the Lord talk about the heart. He, you know, in the Old Testament, it said that the heart is deceivable above all things. Who can know it? If you go by your feeling, that's the hard part. You can't do that. If you're gonna invest your heart, invest your heart in the Lord first. You have to invest all your being into the Lord, all your mind, your strength, your emotion, everything got to be in the Lord first. And once you put the Lord on the pedestal, even though you might make some errors sometimes, but some of you, sister, you, you will leave one man and you'll go to another man because subconsciously he had what appeared to be some good traits of that other man. And then you get bushwhacked again. And you go over and over with the wrong man. Some of you sister, a good man have passed your way. And you overlook him. And, two, and some of you sister, right now, you thinking about that man that got away. When you go through all these bad experiences, and now what, what's happening, sister? I'm talking fact. You're getting older. You're getting older. You can't get back that lost time. You're getting older, and you keep going on this merry-go-round with these guys that are doing the same thing to you. You, you cannot rescue no guys, sister. And like I said, I made I was about to make a statement. Let me tell you what happened to these guys that up and leave some of your sister. They will go be with another woman while the sun is up. Let them have some health problems, something like that. More than likely, or they lose their jaw to the income. More than likely, these ladies are going to bounce on them. Then they're going to come back to you. And then that's when a lot of you want to rescue these guys that did you like that. All they want you to do is help them get back on their feet and they're going to do you like that again. That's all they do. 
They're going to come to you with a sob story and they know you're going to rescue them. And then the bad part about it, they may go back and deal with that same woman because you have helped reestablish them. You have helped build them up again and they keep doing that to you. Sister, why? Why, why, why? Why are you being with forget my man over two years dating him and there's no future? There's some exception to the rule. There's no future. Why are you living with this guy? Ask yourself, why are you living with this guy? Why are you doing all this wifely stuff? Why? 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 Why are you doing this? Another question, why he won't marry you? Why he won't marry you? You know, there are some women that will say this. I don't want to get married. You are a lie. You are a bald-faced lie. You do want to get married. You work for man and you don't want and you're not talking to no other men. You are a bald-faced lie. You do want to get married. As a matter of fact, you want to get married to this sorry guy that ain't doing nothing for you, but he just gaslighting you. That's who you want to marry. These guys, they go out there and be with another woman. And some of you sisters, you thought you was number one. You thought you was number one in his life, right? Some of you sort of thought you were number one and this guy go to another woman and he promote the other woman over you. And you become number two or number three. He could go out there and get another number one. He could get number two, three, four and you fall in rank. And you still there looking like a puppet. <laughs> Give me a bone. <laughs> Give me a bone. I could do some tricks. Why me? I could do some trick for you, daddy. <laughs> That's what some of you sister be doing. Because he treats you like a dog. No, he don't treat you like a dog. Because some people treat dogs better than they do people. Some of you sister, you are loyal to some of these guys. You got all these, this loyalty. Why? What you don't realize, sister, zero plus zero equals zero. You got a zero. This man don't bring nothing to you. Oh, you get confused about the sex. That's what it is. He have good sex with you. And you be and you just forget everything. He got good sex for you, right? He he just put you, I mean, he just lay it on you, right? He just put it down on you. And that's what happened. You get soul tired. He's not your soul, mate. He he flipped you over and do all kinds of kinky stuff to you. And that's what got you, right? Because the other guy, they weren't laying it down like him. But you ran over this other man. Not only did he manipulate your mind, not only did he manipulate your heart, your emotion, now he manipulating your body. So if he manipulating your emotions. He manipulating your mind. He manipulating your body. What else he going to manipulate? Oh, he manipulate your money. He start getting to your money. You give him your credit cards. You give him money. He have access to everything. Oh, oh, you need to get him a car because he need a ride. He take you to work and use your car and he go to the gym and play basketball and those new Jordans that you bought. And then you go, then he come and pick you up late. Cause he had to get a game in, he had to finish the game, and you standing there on the outside waiting for him to pick you up. And some of your girlfriends said, "Say, you need me to drop you off at home?" No, I'm okay. He about to come. He about to come, and you be the last one at work when he pick you up, and you be yeah, 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 yeah. You talking about where you been? All that kind of stuff. Where you been? Uh, where you been? And he said, "I'm sorry." He keep telling you he's sorry. Then he take you home, and then he wants you to cook. Oh. He don't want no. He don't want no Oscar Mayer wiener. He don't want no hamburger. He wants you to make him a big steak, and you in there fussing about the steak and stuff. And he just listening to you. He just listen to you while you cooking the steak. He eat the steak. He eat the steak, and then it's and then it's late as night. And then he have to borrow your car and get your money, and he buy the other lady drink cause he big he big time and now. He's a he's a big timer. He he hang with Lil Wayne then. He's big time. He hang with Lil Wayne and Baby then. He a big timer, right? And he doing all this kind of stuff, right? And he leave you. He leave you destituted. He leave you bamboozled. He leave you with tears in your eyes. 
over two years and you're still holding on to. Smokey Robinson said, the tears of a client. You know what? When a client put on makeup, a lot of times they cover stuff. You know, clients look happy. No, they put on a happy face, but they could be the saddest people. That's right, the tears of a client. Sister, I hope you're not crying the tears of a client. Smoke, go ahead and listen to that song. Nope, this man running games on you, and you know it, but he got, he got you. He got a hold on you, and you can't let go. You can't let go. So let me tell you something. There's a better man out there for you. And there are some people that be on YouTube and all that kind of stuff talk about high-value man. Let me tell you something. There ain't no such thing as no high-value man. Some guys out there, they be telling you, sister, you need a high-value man. Nope. You don't need no high-value man. You need a man that find out the Lord. A high-value man is a man that focus on his money and all that kind of stuff. All that stuff will perish away. Sister, don't look for no man that, don't look for no wealthy man. Look for a man that could take care of himself and you too. You don't have to, he don't have to be a millionaire. Because let me tell you what come with, if you, some of you sister look for a high value man. A high value man is another word for a narcissist. A high value man figure that because if they make up 100K a year or something like that, you supposed to uh, jump as high they say jump. A high value man, if any of you have ever heard of this stuff before, high value men, they believe in jumping from woman to woman. And you supposed to accept it. High value men talk down to you. Though these are counterfeit. Yeah, they got the word good, but they are counterfeit. You need a man. That's fine after the Lord. If you go, if you date, if you are dating a man, dating a man that folks on the Lord, that man going to treat you better than the men in the world. But you want the entertainment. You want the short term that look long term. Uh, -uh. There are only two type of houses, sister. That's the, that. I mean, there are only two foundations. That's the house that built on, on, on sand and that's the house that built on the rock. So which type of house? The house will look the same. It's the same type of weather that's going to beat on the house, but which house are you looking for? The one that's built on sand or the one that's built on the foundation? Before I leave out, my question I'm going to leave to you all, sisters, is this. Are you a queen or are you a concubine? Remember, a queen is the wife or the widow. You're not dead now. So, I mean, he's not dead, but he's supposed to be the king. So if he's a king, you're supposed to be the queen. Kings and queens are married. Understand that? Kings and queens are married. Qu kings and queens don't date. A, if a king dealing with a woman and he's not married, if he's not serious with the woman, if he's not committed to the woman, if he's not in a covenant relationship with the woman, you are a concubine. You are an official concubine. He walk around to be the king. But the, you see, the thing about the concubine, they, they will not sit on the throne. They'll sit on the throne when the queen gets up and the king gets up and the party is over. She'll go sit on the chair then. And, and she, and she want to be the queen. She sit up there. She feel like, okay, this is what the queen feel like. But guess what? Nobody pays attention to the concubine. They look at the concubine and say, That's how, sister, if you reduce yourself to a shot side chick, let me tell you what people, how people look at you. You think that people got your back and stuff. This is how people look at side chick and stuff. Even the, even the queen know, the queen know she's the queen. If the, if the queen know that the king is dealing with you, you're a concubine. And get what the queen do. The queen said, well, I'm sitting in the castle. I'm sitting in the castle. That's what the queen said. I'm sitting in the castle. I'm the one who go to the ball. I'm the one that the people say, hell, king, hell queen. Hell, H-A-I-L, not H-E-L-L. -L. Though the people recognize the queen, they know about the concubines. Yeah, the, con yeah, the king take care of the concubine, but you are lower standard. You are low, you are low status. That's what some of you sister, you're proud of yourself, mind you. Some of you sister, you're proud of yourself by being a concubine. Let's kill the thing about the side chicks and stuff like that. Let's kill it. 
Let's kill it tonight. You the queen or you a concubine. Choose what woman you are based on the two years. You a queen or a concubine. You been dating a man over two years? You been living with a man over two years? Or, oh, he said he's serious, right? Oh, he said he committed, right? Oh, he said he want to be in a covenant relationship. Oh, he don't need no paper to do it. He don't need no paper to say that he married, right? He don't need that, right? He gaslighting you. You're a concubine. Choose tonight what you are, sister. Look at that man. Because he's not looking at me on this. You looking at me. Look at him. And look how much time you to put in it. And ask yourself. Ask yourself. Am I a queen or a concubine? You, that's all you are. One of the two. I love you, brothers. I love you, sister. This is not no beat down on no brother, but the man's supposed to be the king. He's supposed to be the head. He's supposed to be the leader, not the dictator, not the manipulator, not the narcissist. He's supposed to be a man after God's own heart. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Peace out.